In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know how to play Kali efficiently, which artifacts, weapons and teams you can build with her, as well as include multiple showcases so you can see for yourself how to best utilize Kali in every situation. So with the newest Sumeru update, Kale is going to be the first 4-star Dendro character in the game that will act as your support for Dendro reactions. And the most important thing to understand about her are the talents and how much Dendro application they offer. First, we have her elemental skill, which is pretty simple with all things considered. She throws out a boomerang that damages the enemies twice. Now what's cool about it is that there is no ICD on it, which means it will always cause a reaction both times. And more importantly, her first passive will also create a sprout effect, if you can cause a reaction with anybody before the boomerang returns. Honestly, this will happen naturally, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And the Sprout effect, while it says it lasts 3 seconds, it will actually deal 2 instances of Dendro damage in a very small range around your active character, and it will also cause 1 Dendro reaction. So just looking at the skill, it can potentially cause up to 3 Dendro reactions along with a passive, which is pretty good with all things considered. Now her burst is a little bit tricky though. She will deploy her very cute companion, which will create a small field and inside of it, it can deliver around 8 instances of AoE damage. While this may look like a lot at first, her burst has a special ICD, which means, in reality, she will only cause 2 or 3 Dendro reactions in total. And the thing is, the burst duration is 6 seconds, but with her next passive talent, it can be increased up to 3 seconds if you stand with the character inside the burst field and the reaction occurs. What this essentially means is that if you don't stand inside the burst at all, only 2 Dendro reactions will occur. However, if you throw her burst at the enemy, the initial hit always causes a reaction action, and usually you'll be standing in the field already, so then if you follow up with her skill and leave the field immediately, the burst will end after 8 seconds, but it will still cost 3 reactions efficiently that you would otherwise get if you stand inside of it for the whole duration. Like it couldn't be more simple just by looking at this example. The skill's passive will create sprout around her, the burst will cause its maximum amount of reactions, so her playstyle is not that complex as her talents make it out to be, and you don't need to plan around how to use her if you just use the burst and skill while near the enemy. And honestly, you can also first use her skill and then burst. Usually the order barely matters, because you'll still trigger all of her passive talents efficiently. And speaking of talents, you can focus on raising her burst as your main priority, because it does make up the majority of her damage. But you can also just raise her skill alongside with it, because at the end of the day, her damage significantly improves with elemental mastery, which doesn't care about talent level. Alright, so let's talk about Kali's weapon choices. Now, I won't sugarcoat this and just be straight with you. She doesn't offer a lot of damage since her multipliers are really low, so focusing on weapons that maximize her damage should only be treated as an option if you want to squeeze out every drop of damage she can offer. But with that being said, if you do want to maximize her damage, since she can cause decent amount of reactions, which can be pretty strong, her best 5-star option would be Polar Star, followed by Aqua Simulacra, and then for 4-star options, assuming they are all fully refined to surpass the 5 stars I mentioned, Moon's Moon, Stringless, and Prototype Crescent are your best bet. Now I would say out of these 4 stars, Stringless is the most comfortable option to run, but if someone like Fischl is already using it, I would not give it to Kali, unless you have a spare copy lying around. And when it comes to Prototype Crescent, keep in mind that while it is valued by a lot of theory crafters, the passive can be hard to trigger. I mean, getting those headshots can be pretty stressful with all things considered. Regardless, these would be the options you could go for if you want to focus on Kali's damage. But why don't we take a look at some of her support weapons. Her best in slot, hands down, is going to be Elegy for the end. She's basically getting everything she'd want from a support weapon. Energy recharge from a substat? Check. Passive that gives her elemental mastery? Check. Boosting teammates with 100 EM and 20% attack? Um, yes please. Seriously, now that Quicken and Bloom reactions have made elemental mastery so important, this is the best weapon for her, in terms of providing value for her teammates. But I'm sure not many of you have it, so what are the other options then? Well, you're probably not gonna be surprised at this point, but Favonius Warbow is really good on her. Out of many teams I built with her, she quite often ends up as the only Dendro character, so this means that while her burst only costs 60, you still need to solve her energy issues, since if she's the only Dendro teammate, nobody else creates Dendro particles. So in this case, funneling that Favonius energy from the passive is really good. The only important thing to consider is that she will need at least 50% critical rate to consistently activate the passive. Now, the other option would be Sacrificial Bow. What's really cool about it is that the skill has no ICD, which means she can basically trigger 4 dendro reactions. So she could for example cause 4 spread reactions, and it can be pretty exciting to see 15,000 damage show up 4 times in a row from her skill. Now, she does only generate 3 particles, which is 6 in total, 
Kamoto by using Sacrificial Bow, but you are still getting higher base attack than Favonius Warbow. And let's be honest, it's just more fun to throw two boomerangs at once. In fact, I would say if you're aiming to increase her damage, Sacrificial Bow offers a compromise. It can actually beat a fully refined Stringless in some scenarios, and it can also go toe to toe with Aqua Simulacra. However, keep in mind, I wouldn't recommend using this weapon unless it has at least third refinement, because otherwise, the passive just doesn't trigger consistently. But yeah, these are the weapons to look out for, and if I had to simplify, the best damage option would be Polar Star, while the best support bow, hands down, would be Elegy for the End. Otherwise, as a free to play option, Favonius Warbow is always a safe choice, while Sacrificial Bow is more or less her best 4 star weapon alongside Stringless, if you either want some damage or better Dendro application. Okay, so artifacts. What are the best sets to farm for her? Well, starting with the newest set, Deepwood Memories, it offers a familiar two-set bonus we've seen on other artifacts, and it will increase Dendro damage by 15%. However, what really sells this new artifact is the four set. By hitting the enemy with a skill or burst, their Dendro resistance will be lowered by 30%. This is pretty huge because Animo cannot swirl Dendro, so Verdes and Venerator cannot reduce Dendro resistance, and that's why Hoyoverse created this new set. What's also super useful about this Said, is that every bloom reaction and sub reaction are all treated as dendro damage. It doesn't matter if hyper bloom or burgeon are triggered by electro or pyro character, that damage is still going to be dendro. And you guessed it, since Deepwood Memory shreds dendro resistance, that bloom, hyper bloom, or burgeon damage will be significantly higher. And obviously, if Kali is in a team with Tignari, lowering enemies' resistance will be invaluable for him, because as I said before in my Tignari's video, she will help him raise his damage by 36% on average. Overall, this is her best in slot option. However, what if you don't have the resin or are still working towards obtaining the new set? Well, then there's two options to go for. The first one would be Emblem of Severed Fate. It helps her increase her energy recharge and it also sort of improves her burst damage, assuming you manage to get at least 200% energy recharge. Keep in mind that while Deepwood Memories can shred the enemy's dendro resistance, nobody really cares about it besides her if she, let's say, is in a quicken team all by herself. So Emblem Set actually helps her achieve almost the same damage potential as the Dendro Artifact set. But as a last resort, if nobody else in the team is using it, Noblesse Oblige is always a good option to go for. There's not much that needs to be said about it. Use it to raise everyone's attack and help her become a true team player. But let's talk about stats. Generally speaking, it really depends on what type of team she's in, but 200% energy recharge is a really safe option in nearly any team comp, although it can be lower. For example, if she's in a team with another Dendro character, which then 160% would be enough. Or if let's say she's still the only Dendro character, Sacrificial Bow also allows her to hover around 160%. Just remember, her burst is really important for off-field Dendro application, so you definitely want to achieve these recommended ER values. Now for the main stats, if you're not able to get the recommended ER value, going for Energy Recharge Sands is a must. Otherwise, Attack and Elemental Mastery sort of are interchangeable, although if you really don't have that much EM on substats, I would recommend getting the EM Sands. Otherwise, Goblet should be Dendro Damage, and Circlet either critical rate or damage. But as always, make sure to at least achieve 50% crit rate if you're using a Favonius Warbow. And that's pretty much it. You can see everything I said in here summarized, including substat priority, but to make it short and simple, get enough energy recharge on her, and then work on everything else in order. Now, when it comes to team building, you don't really create team comps around Kali, because truth be told, she's a support character, so she's there to help achieve whatever you're trying to do. Still, there are a few things that need to be considered. First of all, in Bloom teams, she will help reduce Dendro Chorus on the ground. If nobody activates Burgeon or Hyper Bloom, or if too many Dendro Chorus are produced, then they will just expire and explode, which means if Kali was the one who triggered the Bloom reaction, which created the Dendro Core, her Elemental Mastery will be used to scale the damage. Also, if she she's in a party with another Dendro teammate, the new resonance will increase everyone's EM by 50, just like that. Then you can increase it by 30 more for 6 seconds, if anyone causes Bloom, Burning or Quicken, and then 20 more if one of the sub-reactions are triggered, like Aggravate. Basically, you can easily maintain 100 extra elemental mastery on everyone with Dendro resonance, which is a pretty huge deal with all things considered. But why am I telling you this? Well, just so you understand that elemental mastery with the new Dendro reactions is a pretty big deal, and while her personal damage can be lackluster, it can be offset with these new reactions. Speaking of which, since she and the Traveler are the only units currently in the game who can apply Dendro off-field, she will work pretty well in both Quicken and Bloom teams. 
For Quicken, she works nicely in a team with Double Electro and Animal. Everyone gets to cause Aggravate from her off-field Dendra application, and someone like Fischl, Beto, Kaching, Yaimiko, and Kazuha really become scary. If the other alternative Quicken team would be Tignati when she's using Deepwood Memory's artifact set, she will consistently help him deal better damage by shredding the enemy's Dendra resistance, and other Electro and Animal teammates will also benefit from Quicken. Finally, for Bloom teams, there's many, many variations to go for, but more or less, make sure you start the rotation with her by applying Dendro, because Hydro is the more efficient element when it comes to triggering and producing Bloom reactions. You can easily see this in a side-by-side -side comparison, where if I trigger a Bloom reaction with Dendro, it almost instantly removes the Hydro Aura on the enemy. But if you use Hydro first, then some of the Dendro Aura still remains on the enemy and you can cause even more Blooms. You also might be wondering, what about burning your enemies alive? Uh, sure, you can do that. I've tried out a team with Benny, Shangling, Kali, and one of the Animo units. I mean, it works, it's pretty funny. But this would also mean that somebody in the team who triggers burning needs to have elemental mastery built on them. Otherwise, that burning reaction won't deal much damage. Overall, Dendro is pretty much like Animo. So many different ways you can go about utilizing it, and since Kali can apply Dendro when she's off-field, it's not gonna be that hard to put her into one of many teams you could think of. Now, I also quickly want to go over her constellations, because it's important to consider her future potential. Anyway, so her first constellation is pretty simple. Increase her ER by 20% when she is off-field. The keyword here is off-field, so if she catches her own particles on the field, this constellation does nothing for her. But there will be more energy she'll obtain when she's switched out, so it does help her reduce her energy recharge needs by about 10% or so. Now, the second constellation is just a big wall of text. But what's it really trying to say is that her unique Sprout passive can be extended by additional 3 seconds after causing a reaction, essentially letting her apply Dendro one more time, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. I mean, hey, anything that lets her improve Dendro application is a welcome addition. Third and fifth constellations, as always, just raises her talent levels, both of which I wouldn't consider normally very important, and yet it does improve both skill and burst damage by a decent amount. However, when we look at her fourth constellation, this is probably her best upgrade. After using her burst, everyone besides herself will gain 60 EM for 12 seconds, a simple but really nice upgrade that helps your teammates and solidifies her position as a dendro support. Finally, her sixth constellation, yet again, improves her skill and now it will summon a mini version of her burst, and from what I understand, this will also create one additional danger reaction. So with all things considered, this is a really good improvement for her. So, what do I think about Kali? Well, as of making this video, she and Dendro Traveler are basically the only two options if you want to build various type of teams and utilize their off-field Dendro application. And with the most recent announcement of 3.1, no new Dendro characters will be released, so it seems like we will be using her for quite a while in Bloom and Quicken teams. But overall, I would say that she's an exciting support for the new Dendro reactions, and she definitely becomes better with her fourth and last constellations. But I don't think you need them in order to enjoy using her. As always, with every support, you want to make sure their burst is ready when you switch to them, so having enough energy recharge is a must, but at the same time, her elemental skill can apply Dendro very consistently, so you can use reactions like Spread to improve her damage, or set up some Bloom reactions. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful, I will be releasing a lot more content content about the new Dendro element, so make sure to subscribe to my channel, and while you're at it, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.